Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's address the boxing folklore that has um, arisen of late that somehow Oscar De La Hoya got robbed against Floyd Mayweather, right? And that uh, Manny Pacquiao can look at the De La Hoya film to figure out how to beat Floyd, right? And that film somehow is going to show him that he can jab his way in on Floyd Mayweather, right? That his jab is key. Now, we all try to talk ourselves up. Uh, no doubt Oscar De La Hoya realizes today that he left a lot of his career on the table, right? That if he had made some different decisions, his career might have been longer, right? He may have had the kind of success that his business partner Bernard Hopkins has had of late. And I'm sure like most of us he remembers things a little bit differently than they were. First let's address his claim that he beat Floyd Mayweather. Right? And officially I believe that decision was a split decision. Right? Judge Tom Kazmarek somehow had Oscar winning the fight 115 to 113. Keep in mind one of the judges had Floyd winning that fight by four rounds. Well what I want people to realize is that in that fight over 12 rounds right Oscar De La Hoya according to CompuBox landed 122 punches. Folks that is barely more than 10 punches landed around. Right? 122 punches landed by De La Hoya. Right? In terms of total punches thrown, De La Hoya, according to CompuBox, landed 21% of his punches. Right? Now let's compare and contrast right Mayweather by contrast even though he throws more than 100 fewer punches than De La Hoya lands 207 punches in the bout if you're one of these people going around saying that Oscar got robbed and let me point out I was in the MGM sportsbook the night of the fight I wasn't at the fight and I can tell you many people streamed into the sports book right after the fight claiming Oscar was robbed. Right? Then you need to explain to the rest of us why Mayweather landed 85 more punches, according to CompuBox, over the 12 rounds than Oscar De La Hoya did. Right? Think about it. Mayweather lands 85 more punches in a fight in which Oscar is landing on average about 10 punches around. Right? The punch totals aren't close. Let's talk about the efficiency. Right? De La Hoya lands 21% of his punches. Did you know that Mayweather landed more than twice that amount in that fight, according to CompuBox? Mayweather landed 43% of his punches. Right, so for those of you who believe that Manny Pacquiao can sit down with the Mayweather De La Hoya tape and find the secret to beating Mayweather, isn't the truth that what he would find is how to be outlanded by more than 80 punches and how to have Mayweather land twice the percentage of punches that he would land? Folks, that tape isn't a guide. Let's also talk about the folklore. Right? The folklore is that De La Hoya's jab, once he figured out that he could land the jab, right, was landing with regularity. If that's so, then just understand that CompuBox, I believe, has Oscar De La Hoya landing 
less than 50 jabs the entire fight. Right? In other words, don't believe me. Look at CompuBox and ask yourself if there's a CompuBox conspiracy that has dampened the numbers. Better yet, go look at the fight. Right? Ask yourself if Oscar is landing that left jab with the kind of regularity and authority that the boxing folklore, the mythology, suggests. I would say no. Right? Let me point out something more foundational. I've heard Manny say he has a great plan for this fight. Right? Okay, great. This isn't the first fight Manny's had in his career. If you're a Manny Pacquiao supporter, can you tell me what his great plan was for the second fight against Marquez, the third fight against Marquez, or the fourth fight against Marquez? Let me tell you, Nacho Beristain, in an interview, Marquez's trainer, once admitted that he thought Pacquiao was most effective in the first fight. Because in the first fight, as Beristain put it, Pacquiao was a wildcat. In other words, I know boxing fans look at Pacquiao and see a successful fighter. But understand, for boxing purists like Nacho Beristain, one of the sport's best trainers, right? It was Pacquiao's lack of discipline, right? His unpredictability that made him his most effective. Right? Because when you try to fit Manny into, you know, a structured boxing game, he doesn't do as well. So this isn't the first big fight Pacquiao has had. To Pacquiao Nation, and I know there are many of you, I have a bunch of Pacquiao critics who comment on every video I do. Okay, fair enough. Right? If you believe Pacquiao is the best thing since the wheel, right? If you believe Pacquiao is the kind of master strategist who sits down and comes up with different game plans for different opponents, tell us in the comment section to this video what was his great plan for the second, third, and fourth Marquez fights. What adjustments did he make? that you believe gave him the edge in those fights. Right? I can tell you, Freddie Roach, in an interview after the third fight, was so shaken that Freddie Roach talked about how he discussed with Manny what needed to be done, and then Manny went out and just fell back into the same habits. I can tell you, too, and we forget this because these stories, dare I say excuses, pop up from time to time. But I can tell you after the third fight there was even folklore here online and the beauty of the internet is that these old stories are accessible. They're still on the server. right? You can do Google searches and uncover these stories. There was actually the folklore at one point after the third Marquez fight that Pacquiao's calves were too big. I'm not making this up. Right? That Pacquiao's calves were too big. And that he was having leg problems that affected his ability to get around the ring. Now understand it's ridiculous because there's never a time, never a time, in the entire Pacquiao-Marquez series where Marquez has more foot speed than Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao's problems weren't his legs. Pacquiao's problem was his game that had him coming into traps laid by Marquez. Well, let's get back to Oscar De La Hoya for a moment. Right? The folklore is that De La Hoya, who fought right-handed even though he was a southpaw, so his heavy punch is his left hand, the same hand he's throwing for a jab. Right? The idea is what De La Hoya did with his jab is what Pacquiao can do with his jab. Let me make a few points. First, De La Hoya is fighting out of 
an orthodox dance. Manny Pacquiao is a southpaw fighting out of a southpaw stance. Right? De La Hoya's jab's thrown with his dominant hand. Manny Pacquiao's jab is thrown with his offhand. Right? De La Hoya had an accurate jab. Folks, with all due respect, Manny Pacquiao's jab is notoriously inaccurate. Right? You don't believe me? Just look at Pacquiao fights. You don't see Manny Pacquiao pulverizing guys with a jab. To Pacquiao Nation, educate all of us. Tell us the fight where Manny Pacquiao is pulverizing a guy with a jab. There are not a lot of Larry Holmes moments in Pacquiao careers. Let's be more blunt than that. Are there any Larry Holmes moments in Pacquiao careers? Isn't Pacquiao's signature the left? Not controlling a guy with a jab. Whatever's in that De La Hoya tape, right? And quite frankly, I don't see where De La Hoya is controlling anything with the jab, nor did CompuBox, but it's okay. Whatever's in that De La Hoya tape, just ask yourself, right? Is there a Manny Pacquiao fight where he is controlling a guy with a jab? Or is that jab really a placeholder? Right? A placeholder for Pacquiao's left hand. Right? Let's shift this up even more. I think the public sometimes loses sight of heights. Right? And it's very important. Pacquiao just fought Chris Algieri, a taller man than Floyd Mayweather, right? A man who fights taller than Floyd Mayweather. Chris Algieri had a problem going to Manny Pacquiao's body, didn't he? Right? Taller guys have a problem going to Manny Pacquiao's body, especially guys who can't as I like to say, fight small. Right? You remember Pacquiao fought Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Let me point out something else. And it needs to be pointed out. Because many of you will leave comments saying, compare and contrast Floyd's performance against Oscar to Pacquiao's performance against Oscar. Right? Now, let's keep in mind that when Floyd fought Oscar, right, it was for Oscar's title at 154 pounds. You know, Oscar weighed far more than 154 pounds the night of that fight. Let's recall, Oscar even fought Bernard Hopkins for the middleweight title. You remember that? That's where Oscar gets stopped. But understand, Oscar probably outweighed Floyd by 15 pounds. I'm not kidding. The night the two guys fought, right? There was no weight restriction in the contract. Floyd, and this is part of public record, right? Weighed in at 150 in a fight for Oscar's 154 title. And like Kovalev and Chavez Jr. and countless others, Oscar was notorious for gaining weight after the weigh-in. Now understand that Oscar fights Manny at a lighter weight. That's the first thing. Right? Later in Oscar's career. Right? You know fighters have a problem losing weight later in their career. And understand the night of the fight. I believe Manny weighed more than Oscar. In other words, the Manny contract, you know, we talk about, you know, weights and the significance, right? The Manny contract was different than the Floyd contract. The Floyd Mayweather, excuse me, the Oscar who Manny fought by contract necessarily had to weigh significantly less, significantly less than the Oscar who fought Floyd Mayweather, 
right? And so keep that in mind as you're comparing and contrasting. Now, I've said this before. Let me say it again. Manny does better against taller fighters. The reason why they're able to sell this fight is because Manny fought a taller fighter and looked tremendous, a guy who couldn't get to his body. Now, folks need to realize that in the entire sport of boxing, there are very few fighters today who go to the body better than Floyd Mayweather. His left hook to a guy's kidneys is one of the best punches in the entire sport. Go back and look at the Robert Guerrero fight. He throws a straight right to the body. Right? That's one of the best punches in the sport. Floyd is shorter than Algerian De La Hoya. Right? He's going to line up differently with Manny Pacquiao. So, let me say this, just in conclusion here. The De La Hoya folklore about having the formula to beat Floyd, what's that based on? If it's not supported by the CompuBox stat numbers, right? The folklore of De La Hoya getting robbed by the judges, what's that based on? Given the fact that Floyd lands at twice the percentage, more than twice the percentage of De La Hoya, and lands 85 more punches in a fight in which De La Hoya for 12 rounds lands 122 punches. Right? Also, this idea of controlling Floyd with a jab, right, um, is Manny's jab. Let me hear from Pacquiao Nation. Is Manny's jab as good as Oscar De La Hoya's jab? Also, why do we feel that a jab thrown from an orthodox stance, which De La Hoya is doing, is even comparable to the angles of a jab thrown from Manny Pacquiao's stance? Right? A southpaw stance. Let me finally close by saying, you know, the two guys fought Marquez. Right? I agree that Marquez fought Floyd at a higher weight. I'll agree with that completely. But what I'm really interested in is Marquez's point of view and understand he hasn't wavered. Right? He believes that Manny makes mistakes. That Manny leaves himself open for counters. Right? He believes that Floyd wins the fight. Now, how much can Manny change in one training camp? Right? Let's just say that I, I've never confused Manny Pacquiao with Sugar Ray Robinson. Right? Manny is the kind of guy who throws a left hand spectacularly well. Right? He does. But he's not a guy who, as you track his career, has improved his game appreciably. He's not Sergei Kovalev, who looked great against Pascal, and I'm sure this version of Kovalev beats older versions of Kovalev. Right? Manny's not Vladimir Klitschko. Right? The Klitschko who takes out Kubrat Pulev, right, who's leading with left hooks, is different than the cautious Klitschko of past years. Right? Do you believe this Manny Pacquiao is better than old Manny Pacquiao? Isn't it all foot speed and a straight left? Has his jab improved through the years, in your opinion? Right? What parts of his game have improved through the years. Is Manny the kind of guy who comes up with new strategies for new opponents? Right? What did he do that differently in the second Timothy Bradley fight? 
I thought that second fight's more about Bradley than it is anything having to do with Pacquiao. So let me hear from folks here. Oscar's been talking about a formula and Pacquiao's been hinting at some new strategy and stuff like that. Are you buying any of the hype? With all due respect to Oscar De La Hoya, why should any of us believe that Oscar has any idea how to beat Floyd Mayweather? Why should any of us believe Oscar has any idea how to get within 85 punches of Floyd Mayweather? Why should any of us believe that Oscar De La Hoya has a clue on how to do better that land less than half the percentage of punches landed by Floyd Mayweather. Right? Oscar's experience, why is that even considered a strategy for beating Mayweather? Right? Doesn't Oscar have more excuses for the poor performance against Manny Pacquiao later in his career at a lighter weight than he does in a fight where he was able to weigh what he wanted after making weight at 154 against Floyd Mayweather. Let me hear from you. Let me also add this too. I've read some of the comments. You know, I'm not on here with an agenda to support black fighters. Right? Um, it's only, somehow, this only comes up when I'm commenting on fights involving a handful of fighters, right? It's unremarkable, quite frankly, when I pick a non-black fighter over a black fighter because the color I'm really looking for in gambling is green, right? So it's a bit crazy to hear that I have a built-in bias against Manny Pacquiao because he's Filipino, right? If you believe that's the case, and if you believe I'm not talking about styles and stuff like that, just direct me to the fight where Manny Pacquiao is throwing an accurate jab from start to finish. That's all I'm asking, right? Just direct me to the Marquez fight where Manny Pacquiao has made adjustments, right? This isn't a racial issue. It's a stylistic issue, right? Me pointing out that Oscar De La Hoya landed 85 less punches than Floyd Mayweather over 12 rounds when they fought, according to CompuBox, is not an anti-Latino statement. It's simply a factual statement, right? So as you consider this Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, and I understand race sells tickets, I understand race gets views here online, right? Why don't we actually look at what matters? The styles, because styles make fights, right? For those of you who believe that the Oscar film versus Floyd shows the style that would work for Manny, Tell us why in the comment section to this video. Let's share information. Let's try to beat the casino. Thanks for stopping by.